Probably going to try and chuck the diff breather kit in uh, under the bonnet. Um, have a little bit of a snoop around. There's a few spots that it can be. Um, there's a ton of spots if you want to make up a custom bracket for it. Uh, I guess the idea obviously is to keep it high out of the water. Um, I'll show you where I think I'm going to mount it and we'll go from there. There's a bit of space under here. Obviously it's a pretty big car. Um, back here I want to keep it up out the way and somewhere where it's not going to interfere with anything. So obviously if a lot of people mount them up here, um, but it does get close to uh, the bonnet strut as well. This bit here is the ECU. Uh, it's fairly high in the back corner of the engine bay. So I'm thinking this is probably going to be a good spot. The front diff breather comes up just here. This is our diff breather. Um, I'm not sure if you can see down there but this pipe goes all the way down to the front diff and across into the breather. So um, keeping it fairly central to this part especially and then obviously the back diff as well uh, comes up onto the filler side and then I'm going to run the new hose all the way down up into the engine bay and probably try and bring it up where that front diff breather comes up as well. So my idea for this is as I drop bolts everywhere. Um, so there's a bolt holding this ECU bracket on the side here. Um, I'm going to bolt that with my bracket just up here. Hopefully that should get it out the way enough and then I can bring the tubes up nice and easily. finished spot for the bracket I'm all right with that I'll probably make up a maybe a bit stronger bracket basically I've just used an L bracket onto the side of the body there as you can see um, it's pretty solid it's not going to move it's not going to vibrate it's not going to hit against anything and it's not going to foul on anything for the bonnet as well you can see that the strut comes down pretty close to the edge there and if I mounted it up here all the filters will be pointing alongside and uh, it's just going to take up a lot of room with all the, all the pipes coming off so I think that'll be good there. The piping that comes with the kit is this plastic blue piping. It's actually, so this is the front diff breather. You can see that it's actually quite a tight fit straight into the hose. Um, if you really wanted to you could probably use some silicon in there but like that's definitely watertight enough for me. It's um, definitely touching the sides and it's, it's going to be perfectly fine in there. So I'm not going to need a massive run of this. Try and keep it out of the way. I might go right down low. This is naturally curved over like that down towards the bottom. So I'm just going to run probably about 30 centimetres of that. We'll try and route this out the way so it's not staring me in the face. Keep it nice and neat. So we'll get this into the existing pipe. Let that go down here. And then we'll bring that up. Probably up around here, I'd say. Maybe a little bit looser. I'm going to cut that off there with a nice razor blade so it's got a nice square cut. And the next thing I'll do is just put some condolute on it, keep it out the way and blend it in as well. Split tubing condolute, slide that on all the way down.
I'm just get our pliers and feed that up. It's going to be a little bit trickier than it needs to. Alrighty, part one done. We'll do the rear diff now. Alrighty, for the rear diff, what I'm going to do, I think it'll be easier, is I'm going to start my, start my feet from here. I'm going to go and channel it down the way that I want to go. So I'm actually going to try and follow this cape, this um, existing one that I've just done here. Go down here along the chassis rail and all along all the way to the back. So we'll try and start feeding that down there as we go. Obviously you want to be careful so that it can't touch anything or rub through on anything. If you want it to last and be 100% waterproof. We'll go cable tires all the way down and along once we've found our nice route down there. So I'm not sure if you can see down there. We've got a lot of moving parts um, down here, obviously upper control arm. What I'm gonna do is, it's a bit hard for me to show you really, but these um, brake lines here, what I'm gonna do is once I've got the split tube condolute all fixed onto the normal piping, uh, I'm gonna cable tie it along these pipes and basically as much as I can follow them the safest route all the way down to the back of the car uh, to where the diff breather is for the rear. I'll show you under the car in a moment. So I'm not sure if you can see properly. I don't know if I can zoom in. But down here, right down here, there's an attachment on the wall that some of the lines, hard lines, the uh, factory lines run through. Um, there's actually a spare. I don't know if all the patrols are going to be like that. TILs might be different, for instance. Um, I'll try and get a better shot, but there's some plastic clips and a, a heat shield, factory heat shield here, um, that these pipes run through from factory. So this middle section was spare, uh, not used, and the plastic clips and everything are there. And I was able to feed for the rear diff breather line, um, this hose straight down through the middle section that wasn't being used. So that could be a good option. It's heat shielded, it's out of the way, it's away from the exhaust, it can't rub through. I'll try and get a better shot from under the car. So under the car, it's just looking up from that part I was just looking down from. So you can see the that factory um, heat shield there, which will be quite handy just up here, attached to the wall. Um, so I'm gonna pull that blue hose without getting too much crap in my eyes. Down and through. Should be able to get a nice run back along the top of the chassis rail and out the way and all the way down to the end. Gonna need both hands for this. It's a bit tight under here, so forgive me for the camera angle. This line here, which is actually for the HBMC, it goes, runs all the way down from what I can see, it runs all the way down the side of this chassis rail, all the way to the back. What I'm gonna do is uh, utilize that, run this tube and cable tie up multiple points all the way along. Uh, that's gonna keep it up out of the way and you know can't get pinched or rubbed through or anything like that. It's a bit hard to show you up in here, but continuing just to run it along the existing pipe all the way down, cable tying as we go. We're at the back of the car now. As I said, we've run 
all the way along the side of the car, up out the way so we've got stuff to cable tie to, we're not in any compression zones or any rub through points. Um, and we've got the diff just here, and a 35 inch tire with the method under the car. We have a Kmart rebar, so it's you can see it's a little bit squashed on there, but she is under there, not much room to move. So I've got the rear diff breather line coming in over the rear subframe, which doesn't move, only the lower arms move. The top of the subframe is bolted to the chassis, doesn't move up and down, can't do anything. All the movement is from, from here down. So this metal line here, not sure if you can see that in the video, but this is the diff breather. It goes up into, up into, through here into the fuel filler. So this bit here, we're probably gonna pop it off just at the top, bring it down and chop this to length and feed it into the hose. And then we'll start making our way back along and cable tying it all up out of the way. I'll see if I can get a better shot of the diff. So laying under the car, right at the back, up here, let's see if I can get my finger up here. This bit here is coming off the top of the diff. It disappears down here on top of the uh, rear subframe and then pops out here. And then we're gonna connect our hose in here. Sorry if that's going in and out of focus. I'm nice and close to the car underneath it upside down. So I'll do my best. But yeah, so I'll set the camera up and I'll use two hands to do that. We'll pop that hose off the other end and feed this tube and cut to length. And then we'll start cable tying. Try and do this with the camera on. Sorry if I get in your way. I'm going to curve this up around here in the general direction we're trying to go. Chop that to length nice and neatly. Push that in there a good amount. Like the front, it's a super tight fit. So I got about two centimeters in there, give or take. Honestly, I feel like that's gonna be perfectly fine. Be watertight. Obviously do what, if you're doing this or attempting this, make sure you feel comfortable with how you set it up. Don't take my word for it. Alrighty, that's in there. We can start cable tying that out of the way. Easy. That pipe just here, the existing that that used to join to, just goes up into the fuel filler area. Doesn't go to anything important, so we don't need to block it off. We can just leave that open and it can sit there. Um, so we've got this here, that's cable tied out of the way. What I'll do is I'll make my way back forward, cable tying it and pulling it tight and making sure we're not rubbing through anything. Everything's all cable tied up, all the way up to here. Out the way. Pull some of this slack free. And I'll chuck a couple of other cable ties here. I'm happy with everywhere that's gone. I'm not a professional installer. I don't necessarily know what I'm talking about, like most people. But I can only show you how I installed it. And hopefully that helps some people. Some key thing is that you don't want it rubbing through or touching anything hot. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So I've done, almost finished the front and rear diffs. And I'm about to chop off for about there roughly. So far it's probably taken me about half an hour, so it's not an overly complex job. Probably could do with a sharper razor blade. I've still got a ton of hose left too. 
run that split shooting on there now. It's easier if I bring that up here. The main place that it's going to have a rub out is probably in the engine bay here. So that's going to be the main place I focus on for the split tubing to come through. And what I might do is just try and slide that back down there. Lengthwise, they really, I mean, this is a big car. I've given, given us plenty of the blue tubing. Tons left, I'll show you in a sec how much we got left. I'm gonna try and, like I said before, I'm gonna try and run this in a similar way as the front diff, just so they can come up and look as neat as possible for a non-professional pushing it another way. I'll we'll have another cable tie there in a sec. Bring this in a better angle and try and insert that. There's, there's heaps of joiners and wire pieces and adapters in the kit. For a cheap kit, it really did come with heaps of extras. Um, so the trans and the uh, transfer case and the transmission are both buried behind there. So it's going to be a top engine cover off. Um, and then pretty simple out of the way job. I can tuck it right up underneath, um, underneath here and run along those lines. And I can even come up into that normal position up into here. So I'm going to probably Y piece the trans and uh, transfer case into one maybe or I might utilize that last one we'll see how we go looking at that I'm probably going to take that sticker off as well um, we'll see how we go with the hoses left I mean probably got I mean I haven't been careful either I've got bits and pieces everywhere probably got another 10 meters left I reckon it's been Pretty easy. The only thing we're getting a little bit thin on is the split tubing. Cool. All right, I'll get some more cable ties on what I've got here and then we'll look at trying to find that gearbox and transfer case breather hose, which again, hiding behind here and a little U-turn, probably right here in the middle, but down about half an arm's length. So I'll come back when I've got that top cover off. an idea of how tight it really is down here if I can focus in on that they are the two breathers there I'll try and circle them in post when I'm editing the video but they're right on the back of the head so you can see there's some plugs and some wires I'm zoomed right in at the moment on those guys so I've got to try and reach my hand back there you can see that the two hoses right next to each other have both got one-way valve caps on them well they're breathers they do like a 90 degree bend so water can't fall straight in them but if you're underwater they'd fill up with water um, good to try and get my hand in there and see if we can get them out um, again I'm sort of <laughs> that was through that's the front tail shaft there and that's the exhaust header off that side so yeah again it's super 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 close and hard to get to we'll go back up the top and see if we can get to them this little box fuse box next to the ECU on the left hand side of the car one 10 mil bolt one little clip and that gets pushes out of the way and that sort of gives you a good angle to get your arm right in there so I'm gonna put my arm in there now I 
can get it right back. And I've got the two, always, I've got the two caps off the ends of the hoses. So if I can focus on that. You can see it's a, not going to really do anything. It's actually pretty useless. It's good for stopping water from getting in the top. It's got an open slit. down alrighty so I've got a pair of those off the hoses now the job will be to try and get my hand back down there and see if I can pull the hoses out I'm super close to getting that in so I'm just going to give the end of that a little bit of CRC and then I should be able to keep the hoses in the factory position and feed the new hose in, which is going to be the best way because then they're still tucked up out the way. Looks like it just slid right in, which is great. Probably got that three or four centimeters in. So that's one of them done. Bring that up and chop that to length. Got tons of hose left, so I'll give myself some extra. and come up out of the way over the top of everything important and away from that exhaust mainly so that's coming right up the back of the head it's not kinked it's actually following the same direction as what they were the hoses were before there's some brake lines up here that I can join to. That's one hose. Now we'll give the other hose a bit of CRC again because that seemed to work really well. So I got that other hose. I got that pipe probably about this far into that hose. Um, so the chance of water getting in there is I'm more than happy about that. This other hose is a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult to get to. We had about one more centimetre of room in here, it would be perfect. But, do we know what we got? So, I think I found the end. Cool, that's in, I reckon. Should be able to go from there. Pipes are all on. Just putting some cable ties on here. Easy little thing to do if you don't already know is you can just basically tie that up wherever you like, like nice and loosely. And you can use the pliers to run it along to where you need if you can't get your hands there. So have that as far as I can there. So I've got both our pipes, these are going to be fed underneath there, I'll get some conduit on them, some split tubing, I'm about to put the engine cover back on, probably should give it a dust before I, or a squirt before I do but it's just going to get dirty again this weekend. Throw some more cable ties on there, chuck that fuse box back on and uh, put the engine cover back on and I'll come back to it. That's all back how it needs to be. Now we've just got to run some more tubing. The, as I said before, the gearbox and the transfer case I'm going to run up into a two into one little um, adapter. So we'll just go um, from this one, push that in, bring 
add on, might just trim a little bit off the end of that condolu. I'll probably wait until I can reroute these up to the bottom of this. They'll both come in, both come into this. Alrighty, I'm gonna reroute these, bring them up into each outlet of here, and then that single one's gonna go out the way up into the breather. So we'll get these over. Something about these guys, you need a ladder to get anything done on them. I'm gonna bring them up the same direction as the other ones as well. Again, just to not that my install has been far from neat, but I'll try and keep it fairly uniform. At least I know where everything's gonna run. If I get any issues. Again, we'll cable tie that out of the way, make sure it's not near any heat source. Definitely gets hot. Careful, being careful not to crease any of the pipes. Don't feel a little bit loaded up with twists at the moment. There we go. So I'll throw a few more cable ties on them. Them down fairly low. Hopefully, they're nice straight cuts. You can seal. I'm sorry, my hands are in the way. Without squishing the pipe. Feel them sort of positively click into that holder as well. There you go. And then lastly, just want to pop that probably on the other side of that wiring there. Excellent. Cable tie around. Here just to keep them off away from the exhaust. Now you could always be a lot neater than what I've done. This is a pretty quick job as we're heading away and I've got a lot of work to do at the moment. So I just wanted to get this in. One less thing to worry about. And we're all done. What I'm probably gonna do is get some more split tubing. I've run out of split tubing. Um, but I'll probably get some more split tubing just to run on this bit, just so it's all black and out the way. Um, and the other thing is I'll probably eventually go from these, the gearbox and transfer case, which I went to into one. I'll check the other filter on there and I just had it off so I could do the bracket up and didn't end up putting it back on, funny enough. Excellent. Cool. I hope that was as simple and straightforward as could be. Still got heaps of tube left over if I ever need it do have a little bit of black convolute here probably not quite enough to do that it might be close I might tap these cable ties off and um, chuck this on as well but everything's all up along the chassis rail so basically we've got our front diff that comes up behind the, behind the airbox goes straight to the bracket our gearbox and transfer case start here and come straight across to the bracket and then the rear diff way back here comes down sideways out the way making sure not to rub past anything uh, cable tied all the way along the chassis rail and then up into the bracket pretty straightforward it's all in one spot but under the bonnet and then the, it's high, the transfer case and the diff breathers are both higher and they're a lot better um, filter as well cool hope that was fairly straightforward thanks so much